Hey everybody, it's Bob Fibbs, The Retail Doc. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, just a little disclaimer, you know, last week I did a uh, examination of Neiman Marcus and their leadership, and I came up with three lessons that I thought any retailer should be able to take from that. And I didn't want you to think that I'm always gonna be looking for the bad. So today I'm featuring Ralph Lauren and how their CEO can teach us about leadership in retail during COVID-19. You know, uh, Patrice Louvet, I hope I've said that right, sir, uh, is the CEO. And he pointed to the company's values tied to timeliness, togetherness, and optimism when he was interviewed back in May. And he had pretty much set the bar pretty high for the way they were going to operate. And yes, in the last few weeks, they've had to announce a global um, reduction of workforce, about 15%. It's definitely tough, but no one is surprised by that. I think it's the way that he has gone through and shown himself during this time. And one of the things that he said just the other day is command and control leadership is over. The world is too complex and moving too fast for that type of decision making. It's now about trust and empowerment of teams. And I want you to think about that because again, everyone's trying to get more customers and one of the big things we're hearing about Gen Z and millennials is they are really focused on what are you doing for your employees? How are you taking care of people? And what are you doing to live a corporate vision that I can support with my dollars? And I think Ralph Lauren is doing a great job of it. In fact, the short side is people matter. Yeah, they're doing all kinds of digital initiatives and Ralph Lauren has always been a cutting edge brand. I think they've gone through and... Um, one time they had done a fashion show, digital fashion show on the front of a building. They have done so many innovative things, but at its heart, it still comes down to quality and timelessness. And I think that ultimately the first thing any retailer should be able to take from this is to aim for right sizing a brand, not just downsizing at all costs. I think that ends up costing you sales, ends up costing you turnover and, and ultimately makes you that uh, less competitive because you're always chasing your tail instead of saying, how am I going to work together? How am I going to collaborate? So that's my first point to you today. But also, you know, I'm wearing this purple sweater today and I've had this for probably 25 years. I don't know if you can see what an amazing color it is. I hope it doesn't feel like, uh, uh, what was it? Devil meets uh, wears Prada when she talked about that uh, cerulean blue, that this was some very old color. But in any event, I digress. So uh, I was in Honolulu at the Ala Moana Center and I walked by one of the boutiques and saw this in the window and I just walked right up to a display that had them. And I was like, wow, purple is not my color. And this young woman got into a nice conversation with me. He goes, just try it on. It is so soft. I go, well, wool, you know, kind of scratchy and I don't want to do it. She goes, it's lamb's wool. And she told me a little bit about it. And I said, well, I don't want some kind of a trendy thing. She goes, you'll have this for a long time. I think about that every time I put this on because I spent several hundred dollars for a sweater on vacation in Hawaii. And I still like wearing it. It's still soft. It's the only wool sweater I even own, lamb's wool uh, and cashmere, I think it is. And it's a brand that has built their reputation on timelessness and quality. And uh, so my second part to you is to realize that they built their brand on quality meant to last. And that is what we're seeing with Gen Z and millennials. Look at Poshmark. You want to see how well your brand's doing? Check out the resale uh, sites and see how well they hold their value. That should be a clue as to how well people think of your brand. But also understand your customer service it ties into leadership as well. And you know, the we're hearing that for the holidays, people are gonna have to be still standing out on sidewalks because there's gonna be uh, limited capability in a lot of stores. Ask yourself and your uh, uh, C-level execs, would you stand out on a sidewalk to experience your store? And if not, that's where I would spend my time. Because if that's not the case, they certainly aren't going to just drive up and wait in their car for 45 minutes like a friend of mine did with a home improvement company who is all over the media talking about how great curbside is. He's like, this is the worst experience I've ever had with this brand. If you don't have a compelling reason for people to shop with you, I think you're going to have a tough uh, go of it in 2021. And that certainly starts with, with your uh, brand, certainly the quality of it. But let's face it, 70% of you retailers are carrying the same product as everybody else. So all you really do have is that customer service and that leadership around your team. That's what makes the difference. And so um, 
Uh, the other part I wanted to lift up here today is how uh, Ralph Lauren, the actual founder of uh, Ralph Lauren, has forgoed his own salary 2021, and the CEO has taken a 50% pay cut. Now, that may sound like, oh, well, that's not that big a deal. It's still half, and I think it was pegged the last time I read, like $1.2 million. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I've covered other CEOs making far more. And yeah, he's got stock options, et cetera. But what does that tell the team? What does that say? It's about trying to find a way to hold this together. And optics matter. The old way that people used to manage retail is they're all disposable. It's just a numbers game. Just get them in and get them out. And it's that boss that I'm the boss and do this. And I'm telling you, that's not going to work in 2020 certainly with a pandemic raging and not in 2021. And I think Mr. Louvet has been able to show us that the leader is at the front and saying, follow me together. And I think that's the other thing that, that people are missing right now is that we are in a we moment, not an I moment. As I've talked in some of my other writings and articles and interviews, that there really is gonna be a dividing line and people are gonna be looking at what did you do during this time to take care of the brand and what did you neglect? Do you think that you can have a, a department store? I was uh, talking to a buddy of mine saying, you know, this one department store they know, uh, one of the locations is supposed to run on 46 people. It's now running on 16. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> and at the end of the day, do you think anyone else cares? No, because we're all about, hi, I'm just trying to hold on. And I think what we need to see is for us to put on our big boy and big girl pants and go out there and find a way to lead by example. And that was my, uh, when I went into Glassdoor this morning and took a look, maybe that's why the CEO has an 83% approval rating on Glassdoor. That's pretty amazing in this day and age. And so my third part to you today is that CEOs and C-level executives lead by focusing on core values and sharing the pain. I think we are trying to find what that new normal is, but it still comes down to, as I said before, people matter. So today, I just wanted you to lift up Ralph Lauren. Hey, thanks for uh, joining me here. What can you take away from this? Aim for right-sizing your brand, not just downsizing. You know, we're coming into the holidays. Are you going to say we're going to cut entry-level uh, sales associates because they don't matter? Or are you going to say we're going to find a way to give the best experience by having people who are trainable and actually like working for us? Or are we going to settle for something else? Number two, what are you building for that customer that lasts. I think it's the customer experience. I'm still wearing this sweater from many years ago. And thank you very much, Ralph Ren, for making such a great color that I've never seen anywhere else and that people always say looks amazing on you. I don't know if it works with the blue background. You can let me know in comments, I guess. And finally, to lead by example through core values during this time of COVID. You don't get a pass because we're going through a pandemic and you can't just say, oh, well, we'll just go to some digital initiatives the heart of any brand is gonna be what? People, people matter. And if you believe that, which I do, then I hope you're gonna find it me on SalesRx. That's my online retail sales training platform where I teach you how to engage a stranger, get them to drop their barrier, even when you're wearing a mask, to develop rapport, become that trusted advisor so you really can sell everything the brand offers and not just that one widget that they saw online that they can get from some other online competitor. Because I'm telling you, the more you get rid of customer service and training, the more your store becomes a warehouse for people just to walk in and get stuff. And you know what? We already have a number of those online. Unless you can take a core value and say, we're going to build on this in this time of crisis and deliver an exceptional brand experience, I think you're going to have a tough time. And if you'd like a partner in that uh, journey, then certainly check me out or go to retaildoc.com to learn more. I'll see you next week when I come up with more lessons any retailer can learn from the stories that are in retail this week. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Bob Fibbs, The Retail Doctor. Goodbye.